I built a modern collapsible side menu using only basic controls and power apps and in this video, I will show you how you can build yours. This video is the second of my modern power app side menu series and in the first video, we created a compact power app side menu. In today's video, we will be taking this a step further. We will build a slick collapsible side menu and as a bonus for you, I will be showing you how to build a cool custom toggle for seamlessly switching your app between light and dark mode all while maintaining a self-aligning design. If you haven't watched the first video, in this series, please check that out first to understand the base design of the modern side menu component. And with that being said, let's get into the video. For today's demo, I'll also be using the customer servicing app from the last video. If you want to know how I built this gallery, the surrounding UI, custom search bars, and basically all of this, check out my videos on my modern Power Apps UI playlist. And if you prefer to be a little bit more hands on, all apps and components in my videos are now available for download to channel members. So join the channel today for a premium learning experience. Okay. Moving on, the collapsible side navigation allows users to collapse or expand the side menu. This is an accessibility feature that helps your app cater to different user types. Some users prefer the navigation to take up less space on their screen, while some like it expanded so they can see all menu items. We are going to reuse some controls from our compact side navigations. So to save time, let's just duplicate the compact side navigation components. To simply summarize what's going on here, inside of the components, we have a vertical responsive container with three sections. At the top, we have an image control containing our logo. In the next section, we have a gallery that contains our SVG icons rendered as custom buttons. And in the last section, we have a container with an image control for the user profile image. In a collapsible side navigation, a major thing to sort out is the button users will click to expand or collapse the side navigation. Also, you need to decide the width for both menu modes. In my case, when collapsed, I want the width of the menu to be 70. And when expanded, I want it to be at 150. So let's add our button now. Adding a non-responsive container, make sure it is between the logo and gallery. Set the width alignment to center. Set the width to 35. Turn off the flexible height. Set the height also to 35 and set the border radius to 10 and clear the drop shadow. Inside of the container, add in an image control for our icon. Make sure it fills the container by setting X and Y to zero and the width and height to the width and the height respectively. Next, I'll get the icon I want to use from Bootstrap, copy the SVD data, replace double quotes with single quotes, and then render it in the image control. I also want to use our base icon color so I'll substitute current color with the base icon color. If you don't understand this, please rewatch the section on custom SVG in the first part of the series. I'll also need to add a little padding to make the icon smaller. On our menu item icons, I added a top and bottom padding of 8. But since I want the hamburger icon to be a little bigger, I'll use a top and bottom padding of 5. You might also be wondering why I didn't make the icon data a custom property like I did the menu icon. The reason for this is that the hamburger icon is an integral part of the whole component and it will need to be changed or removed, hence the icon data was hardcoded into the component. The next step is to make the icon clickable. So let's add a button. Clear the text, set X and Y to 0 and set the width and height to print the width and print the height respectively. Make the field transparent, clear the border, set the pressed field to our custom property and set the hover field to our custom property. Before moving on, let's properly position our component items. First, select the root container, change its vertical alignment to start, and set a gap of 10. Then, select the gallery, turn on flexible height, set the minimum height to 0. This will push the logo and hamburger icon to the very top and push the profile image to the very bottom and leave everything else for the gallery. Now the basic structure is completed, let's make our component expandable. Select the hamburger icon button and add this code in the unselect property. This creates a boolean variable var menu expanded which toggles on click of the icon. We are then going to use this variable to control our components. First, create a new custom property for the component. I'll call it menu expanded. Set its data type to boolean and change the property type to output and then save. We are creating this as an output property because we are going to need this value on our app screens. Now, here's the tricky part. First, set the default value of the property to the variable we just created earlier, which is var menu expanded. Then, 
change the width of the component to this formula. This checks if the custom property, which is being controlled by a variable, is equal to true. And if it is, it sets the width to 150, else it sets it to 70. Now, if we click our hamburger icon, you can see that the width of the component toggles. They're nice. Our root container is set to always fill the component. So when the component expands, the container expands along with it. The next thing to do is to start configuring the controls for the expanded view. Starting with the logo, I want to use the full logo and not just the icon when expanded. To do that, I'll first create a custom property logo underscore expanded and set the data type to image and set the default value to my full logo. Then in the image property of the image control, add this formula. This checks if the menu is expanded and if it is, it shows the full logo. But if it's if it isn't, it shows the compact logo. Now, as you can see, the padding we are using for the compact logo doesn't match the full logo and it is now making it small. So let's modify a custom property that controls this. I'll also add a similar condition, checking if the logo is expanded. And if it is, it should use a smaller padding of 10%, else it should use the original 20%. Next is the hamburger icon. And this is an optional change, but it currently always stays in the center. However, I want it on the left when the menu is expanded, but in the center when collapsed. So let's modify its um, width alignment. I'll first select it and change its aligning container property to this formula. This uses the start width alignment when the menu is expanded, but it uses the center width alignment when the menu is collapsed. Now let's tackle the menu items. I want to shift the menu icons to the left and position the menu names on the right. To make this happen, we'll work within the gallery. Inside the gallery, there is a template container that fills the gallery's template. And within that, we have a container housing the button and the icon. The container is currently set to stay, to stay centered in the template and we'll keep that as is. The height is good too, so no need for adjustments. However, we need to tweak the width to fill the template container. So let's set up a condition. If the menu is expanded, we want it to use the parent width, hereby filling the parent. But if it is collapsed, we want it to use its own height, hereby creating a square. And when we test it, you can see how it reflects. Moving on to the icon, I'll select the image control and change the width to self the height. What this does is to make the icon a square, a square Awkward. <laughs> hereby leaving space for the menu name. The cool part about this is that when the menu is collapsed, the image control being a square seamlessly fits the space inside of the parent container thanks to its height matching that of the parent container. Now let's add the menu names. I'll add a text label and make sure the button is still positioned at the top layer so it remains clickable. Next, I'll set the X property to the width of our image control. What this does is to make sure the label starts immediately after the icon. And then I'll set the width to print the width minus self the X. This will make the label take whatever space is left in the container. And finally, I'll set the label's height to print the height. Since my app will have both light mode and dark mode, I can't hard code the text color. So let's create a custom property for it. I'll create a custom property text color and set its data type to color. Save it and then set its default value. Next, I'll change the label's color to the custom property we just created. Then I'll change the font to Leto, the font size to 8, the font weight to semi bold, and then change the text, the text property to this item, the menu name. Lastly, let's add a condition to the label to make it only visible when the menu is expanded. To do this, in the visible property, add this condition. This value will only be true when the menu is expanded and that will in turn make the label visible. And with that, we are done with the menu items. Nice. Moving on to the profile at the bottom, I want to add in the logged in user's name when the menu is expanded. And since we just did something similar for the menu items, let's just copy the label. I'll copy the label and paste it inside of the root container for the profile section. I'll set the text to user.fullName, increase the font to 9, increase the font size to 9, set the height alignment to stretch, the minimum height to 0, and then turn on flexible width, set the minimum width to 0, and then you can also remove the right pattern if you want. Let me also reduce the font size back to 8, and that looks much better. <laughs> yeah, boy.
Now, let's build a custom toggle that will switch the app's color mode. But before that, it has come to my attention that 82% of viewers are not subscribed to the channel. Why? 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 So if you've learned something in this video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to get notified when I drop new cool videos. So let's build our custom toggle now. The first thing I'll do is to create a custom property to control the color mode. Add a new custom property, app color mood, set its data type to text, save it, and set its default value to light. Now that is done, let's craft at custom toggle. First, add in a non-responsive container, then set the width alignment to center, set the width to 60 for now, turn off flexible height, set the height also to 60 for now, clear the border radius, and drop shadow for now also. Then inside of the container, add in a vertical responsive container, set its X and Y value to 0, set its width and height to 60 for now, and clear the, um, the drop shadow and the border radius. Once that is done, inside this container, I'll add a section for each toggle value. To do this, I'll add in a non-responsive container, set its width alignment to stretch, set its minimum width to 0, turn on flexible height, set the minimum height to 0, clear the border radius, and drop shadow. Then inside of this container, I'll add in an image control for my icon. Make sure I fuse the container by setting X and Y to 0 and the width and height to print the width and print the height respectively. Then I'll get an SVG icon and render that inside of the image control. As for the icon color, I want it white when active, but it should be the base icon color when it is inactive. So to do that, I'll substitute the color with this condition. Since, the, since this icon is for the light mode, I'm checking if the app's current mode is equal to the light mode, and if it is, the color should be white, else it should be the base icon color, which is blue. I'll also add in a top and bottom padding of it to make the icon smaller. As for the container background, I want the color to instead be the base icon color when active, but transparent when inactive. So I'll, so I'll add this condition in the field property. It checks the, if the app mode is the light mode. And if it is, it sets the fill to base icon color, which is blue, else it makes the fill transparent. Now all of that is done, let's duplicate the light mode container and start making changes for the dark mode. First, I'll change the icon, and then I'll change the conditions to dark on both the image control and the container fill. The next step is to make the toggle auto align depending on whether the menu is expanded. To do that, select the responsive container and then add this condition to the direction property. This will check if the menu is expanded, and if it is, it sets the layout to horizontal, else it makes it vertical. The next step is to make the height and width also dependent on the menu. To do that, set the width to this condition. It checks the container's direction, and if it is horizontal, it sets the width to 60, else it sets it to 30. The height is the opposite, with it being 30 if horizontal else it is set to 60. Once that is done, set the toggle container to take its width and height from the inner responsive container. I'll set the width to app mode btn container dot width and set the height to app mode btn container dot height. Then let's add a border. I'll set the thickness to 2 and set the color to our base icon color which is blue. Then let's add in a border radius to make the control look a little bit more modern. I'll add a border radius of 20 and I'll also add this border radius to the individual toggle sections. So let's test it out. Now, you can see our custom toggle auto-aligning al auto depending on the menu mode. I like it a lot. Then, let's make the toggle clickable. I'll add in a button control. Make sure it is positioned above the inner container. Clear the text. Make it fill the container by setting X and Y to 0 and the width and height to print the width and print the height respectively. Next, make the field transparent, clear the border, set the press field to our custom property which is the transparent black, and set the hover field to our custom property which is the lighter transparent black. The last step is to configure how the button will work. This is a component and we want the button to modify app data outside of the component. So there are two ways to go about this. The first method is to enable enhanced component properties, which is still an experimental feature as at the time of this recording and then create an event custom property. This kind of custom property allows to add behavior code as a variable on the component. 
For example, I can set the default value to a function that modifies a variable and then run that on select of my component button. However, since this um, feature is still experimental, it's not advised to use this for your production apps. The alternative is to enable your component's access app scope. This gives your component access to your app data and the component is no longer explicit. This allows you to directly add in whatever behavior you want in your component button and it will modify data outside of your component. Ideally, I prefer the first method because I think reusable components should be explicit from app data. However, for now, I'll use the second method. I'll first enable access app scope and then add this code in the unselect property of the, code, um, of the toggle button. This will toggle var app color mode between light and dark, and that will in turn control the color scheme used all around the app. Another advantage of enabling access app scope is that you can now directly add app data as the default values in your custom properties. So let's do that for a few of them. I will set nav VG to tertiary color, set hover fill to var hover fill, set press fill to var press fill, set selected icon BG to this condition, set logo underscore expanded to this condition. So this condition toggles which logo to use for each color mode. And then I'll set the text color to primary text color and set the app color mode to var app color mode. And let's test that out now. Sensational. Nice. Now our component is done, let's add it to our screen. It's the same process as when we added the compact side navigation. So make sure your screen is divided into two using a horizontal container and then add your page content on the right, add your side navigation on the left. The only difference is that you should make the width of the menu container dependent on the side navigation. To do that, just set its um, width to your side navigation width. This will make the width adjust automatically depending on the menu mode. So when the menu expands, the menu container expands along with it to create space for it. And when it contracts, the menu container contracts also. So once that is done, make sure all your custom properties like the menu content and the current menu ID are all set correctly. And once all of that is done, it's you're ready to add it on your other screens. So I'll add it on my on all the other screens and let's test that out now. That brings us to the end of the second video in this three part video series. I hope by now you should be able to create a modern looking collapsible site navigation menu. In the last video of this series, we would cover the multi level site navigation design and also learn how to build it as a component. If you've enjoyed this video or series so far, or you've at least learned something, please like the video. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button to get notified when I release the next video in the series. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.